when Amad Diallo arrived, they know that Amad Diallo in this moment is on another level. He's like ready to play for Manchester United, also for the first team, if they will need in the coming days, in the coming weeks. <laughs> in my opinion, he's not bad. He's not a bad person. He's just working for himself and for his players. So Paul wants to change. Paul would like to, to change also his future, like going to another club. Let's see, it will be Manchester, it will be Real Madrid, or will be Paris Saint-Germain, or will be Juventus. Many clubs are interested, but there is nothing advanced yet. When it comes to transfers, nobody does it better than the man himself, Fabrizio Romano, who joins me today to talk about Amad Diallo, Paul Pogba, Jaden Sancho, Erling Haaland, Solskjaer's summer transfer plans, Don everything. So thank you very much for joining me today, Fabrizio. Thank you, thank you, also a big pleasure, and thank you for the invitation, obviously. Thank you. Right, well, I mean, let's, let's get straight to it. What I'm going to do uh, in this interview, uh, Fabrizio, I've asked people to send in their questions. And I'm going to read out what they want to know, and there's no better place to start here than with Rohan's question asking about Rojo and Romero situation, whether they're going to leave United this month, because this January was never going to be a January where United made loads of signings. Obviously, Amad Diallo came in, and we'll talk about him in a bit. But uh, what could happen? Could, could Rojo still potentially leave? Uh, what about Palestri? He's getting linked with a, a low move, uh, I think, to, uh, to Spain. Romero, Lingard, there's a few that could happen, but is anything actually going to happen? Yes, I think the situation of Pellistri is at the moment the closer to be completed at the moment between the one you mentioned, just because there is something with Spanish clubs, yes, so I'm working about it to understand where he's going, but for sure I'm confirmed that the player is going to leave probably for some months. There is nothing done yet, but they are talking, so for sure there is this possibility, and it's positive also for the guy, because when Amad Diallo arrived, they know that Amad Diallo in this moment is on another level, he's like ready to play for Manchester United, also for the first team, if they will need in the coming days, in the coming weeks. And for it would be good to go on loan. So that's why Manchester United are open to talk with Spanish clubs and are considering this possibility. They have a lot of proposals of possibilities for, for Pellistri. So they're going to decide in the coming days and let's see the final decision by also Solskjaer, obviously. And about Rojo and Romero, as Solskjaer mentioned some days ago, some weeks ago, they are like available on the market. So about Rojo, we have a lot of rumors about Boca Juniors, and it's true that Boca Juniors would love to have Marcos Rojo immediately with them. But at the moment, Manchester United have not received anything from Boca Juniors. So they are still waiting. There's just agents talk with Boca Juniors for this possibility. The player would like to come back in Argentina. But let's see if they make an interesting proposal to the player and what they will tell to Manchester United. So at the moment, it's so quiet. Also for the situation of Romero, they are ready to talk, but at the moment, there is nothing advanced. So Manchester United are so quiet also because the players can stay till the end of, of the window and then next summer deciding of, for, for their future. It's not a problem for Manchester United. It's more a problem like for Boca Juniors, for Rojo, because if they want a the player, they have to move and they have to make the official bid. But it's never so easy, you know, with the coronavirus impact in this moment to offer this kind of contrast to players like Marcos Rojo. Image that Argentinian football is not in an easy economical situation by many years. Also right now with this pandemic, is not so easy. So they are just waiting and Manchester United are open with Boca Juniors for Rojo. Now, a point you made there about, about Palestri, the fact that Amadiallo came in, us, and by the sounds of it, kind of took maybe United a little bit by surprise as to how ready he is for the first team. That's exciting. What what do you think United fans should and, and could expect of Amadiallo? I mean, he, he really didn't have that many minutes for Atalanta in Serie A, and we paid a substantial amount for an 18-year-old. Who is, is he really a special talent? But what's the feeling out in Italy and, and in and around the club about how good Diallo is? Yes, first of all, I want to say that, in my opinion, he's an amazing talent, but he's really young. So I hope that all this hype around the guy, around the player, uh, would not create any problem to the player. Just because, obviously, he's really, really young. And as you mentioned, he was not playing with Atalanta, just some minutes in Serie A. He was good in Champions League, but it was like one or two or three appearances in total. So, you know, he needs time, obviously. But the impact of a player when he's coming to a new club, into a top club, European and world club like Manchester United, arriving and being impressive in, in trainings is not for everyone. So looking at what Ahmad did since he arrived at Manchester United in some weeks has been really amazing. I'm told that people around Manchester United are really happy with him. Also, people around Solskjaer are really happy with his just also with this mentality, because the skills are obviously amazing skills, but also the mentality is so important when a young guy is coming into a new country, into new football, in the Premier League, with, with top clubs ready to, to go in on the pitch and, okay, showing skills. He needs time, in my opinion, but when it's up to the skills, 
I am 100% sure that this is an amazing talent. I am just um, saying he needs time also by the physical part, just because he needs to work on this one, because in the Premier League you have to be ready also by the physical part and not just by the skills part. So he needs time also about this side, but I am 100% sure that he's ready for this challenge, just because we're talking about the top talent. Here in Italy, Juventus were following him so closely. They were like intention to open talks with Atalanta to sign him, but it's never easy when you want to talk with Atalanta about their best talents. So Manchester United has been so smart and so quick when they had to sign Ahmad. And as I told you, first feelings about his coming to, to Manchester United in some weeks has been really, really positive. So I'm convinced that in some weeks we can see Ahmad with the squad. I don't know about the minutes, how much you can play like immediately, obviously, because Manchester United are having an amazing season in Premier League. So playing with a young talent when you have players like Rashford and Martial and Bruno is never easy to go on with the talents and with a new one. But for sure, he will get some minutes, in my opinion. It's just my opinion because we're talking about one of the best talents from the best academy we have here in, in Italy because Atalanta has the best academy for sure. Well, that's exciting. I, I th- Obviously, one player that you'll know a lot about from his time in Serie A with the Juventus is Paul Pogba. And it's a situation which is really strange for United fans because it was only a couple of months ago that Mino Raiola was talking him. Well, you know, I'm sure you've dealt with Mino Raiola. As, as, as a side point, have you, have you dealt with Mino Raiola? Is, is, he, is, is he as bad as he seems to be? In my opinion, he's not bad. I know Mino Raiola since many years just because He's the best agent in the best agent in the world with with Jorge Mendes, so for sure yes. But he, in my opinion, he's not bad. He's not a bad person. He's just working for himself and for his players. Imagine that if all top players go with the same agent, it's not casual. It's never casual. Is that because his clients are just happy with an agent fighting for their interest? So it's so easy sometimes to go against Mino Raiola, and players are like, okay, are, are feeling like uh, we, I have the best agent in the world. So he can help me. But Mino Raiola is working for the players and not for the club. So he's also so a funny person. He's a positive person always. Obviously, we are talking about a person that for the fans, you can say, yeah, I want my players to stay. So it's normal. Before the Champions League match, talking as Raiola did for Pogba was something that creating a problem for Manchester United and for the fans. And they can understand the fans. And you have always to respect the fans. But on the other side, you have one of the best in the game, for sure, as Mino. And he's just working for his, age, for his players. So he was planning for this interview. He had this interview and he's sure that next summer it will be like interesting for him to, to sell Pogba. And it, it, that was going to be my next question, really. What, as I said, a couple of months ago, Paul Pogba's form was out of sorts. Pogba's been out of sorts. But then in the last couple of months, he's been absolutely sensational and crucial to this resurgent at United that is now top of the Premier League and six points ahead of Liverpool. But will Paul Pogba sign a new contract, or do you, is is the noise still suggesting that Paul Pogba will leave United in this summer, in the summer transfer window? At the moment, I have still the same info as I mentioned at the start of January, at the end of December. So Paul wants to change. Paul would like to to change also his future, like going to another club. Let's see, it will be Manchester, it will be Real Madrid, or will be Paris Saint Germain, or will be Juventus. Many clubs are interested, but there is nothing advanced yet, just because obviously. There is also no price. Manchester United are not talking with anyone just because they want to arrive to next summer and then decide about the future of Paul, the price of Paul and everything. For sure, for Manchester United, it's impossible to, kill Paul Pogba, to keep Paul Pogba with this contract also one year, one year and half right now, but will be one year next summer, and then having the risk of losing him as a free agent in 12 months. So it would be absolutely crazy. So that's why I say that if Paul will listen for a new contract, it has to be like in some months. Or if they arrive the next summer, Paul has to leave Manchester United. At the moment, there is nothing also for his new contract. So he's just focusing on the pitch. He's not talking with any club. Mino is working for next summer, but he's not talking with any club. He's only focusing on the pitch. And as you mentioned, it's crazy in football sometimes, but after the, the words from Raiola, we were expecting, everyone were expecting, like saying, OK, it will be difficult for Pogba to be back at top level after your agent is talking like this and you're planning to leave the club next summer. And incredible, but yes, Paul immediately after started to be back at his, at his top, top level just because he's been an amazing professional. Also, immediately after uh, Mino spoke about him and his future, he was going to talk with Solskjaer and say, OK, probably next summer I will consider to leave the club, but I will be the best professional till the last day I will be at Manchester United. So at the moment, the situation with Pogba 
is absolutely focused on the pitch. And next summer we will see. But without a new contract, 100% he will leave Manchester United. Yeah, well, we've already lost him on a free agent once, let alone when he's this good. So let's hope that doesn't happen twice. But you're speaking about next summer, somebody who we spoke about in our last interview during this summer, Jadon Sancho. Now, he's had a bit of, um, uh, by his standards, a poor season in the Bundesliga. And it was only the other week where he scored his first Bundesliga goal of the season. Now, Dortmund really held firm on their stance that they wanted uh, what, around about 100 million plus for Sancho. After the season he has had, do you think that Dortmund's stance has changed on Sancho? And does Sancho, because for me, looking on the outside, it, it looks like Sancho's kind of, he wanted that move. I think the move sort of built itself into existence in his head, but he didn't get the move. And he's, Does he want to join Manchester United? And has Dortmund's stance, as I said, changed or softened because of what's happened this season? My personal opinion, and it's just a personal opinion, just because I'm not working for Borussia Dortmund, unfortunately, but and, and always top clubs like Manchester United, like Borussia, they plan for the future only like in March, in April for the summer. So at the moment, they have no price for next summer just because they are thinking to this season and then they will plan for the next one. But in my opinion, knowing how the German clubs work, it's really difficult that they will go with a lower price. It's really difficult. Possible Manchester United can try to negotiate like on installments of timing for paying, um, this kind of details. But about the price will be really difficult to have a different price for Jadon Sancho. Then let's see, just because in football everything can happen. And I repeat, I'm not working for Borussia Dortmund. But as you mentioned, for sure Jadon was really one step away from joining Manchester United last summer. At the end of July was really, really close just because the agreement between the player and Manchester United, as I mentioned a lot of times, was really done. So the player wanted to join Manchester United. The negotiation was going really well, was progressing like the agreement was really close and then it was broken some days just because of the problems between the clubs. But Jadon has never been a problem for this move. He was always open. He was also respectful with Borussia Dortmund just because he didn't want it to broke with the club. He's been so respectful for the club for giving everything in this moment. But next summer, I think Jadon can move. Yes, if it is the question, I say yes. And, but let's see if only Manchester United will be in the race. Because many clubs are interested in this kind of talent. And in this moment, there is nothing advanced. But I'm sure that will be an interesting race. For sure, Manchester United will be ahead of the race if they want Jadon Sancho again. Because they had the agreement with the player and also with the agent. So they would be ready to negotiate with Jadon again and with Borussia again. But let's see if also other clubs will join the race. I mean, I'm sure other clubs will join the race. This summer seems like a, it was a, United were the only club really going after Sancho, but I'm sure that will change next summer. And another Dortmund player who maybe United can go back in for is, is Haaland. Now, does that release clause uh, that Dortmund agreed to in his contract that United refused to have, does that come into effect in the summer? And a question here from Ashwin that he sent in asking whether or not you, know, you feel or you know, that United will go in for Haaland or a striker this summer? At the moment, uh, first of all, to mention the close, the close will not be valid next summer, but only on the other one. So we have to wait for one here and out to see the close of Erling Haaland being valid. That this is a problem, I think, just because today you have to negotiate with Borussia Dortmund again. It's not just up to the, to the close. The close is for 75 million euro. But this summer, I think, to negotiate for Borussia Dortmund, with Borussia Dortmund for Holland won't be less than 100 million euro or something like this. Also because we're talking, in my personal opinion, of the best talent in the world. So it's really difficult to go to sign him this summer. Also because if Borussia Dortmund will sell Jadon Sancho, it would be really difficult to sell also Holland in the same summer. So they have to decide with a strategy. In March or in April, they will decide also about this, about Sancho, about Holland, so we understand more about the situation. But for sure, at the moment, Holland is happy with Borussia Dortmund, so he's not like desperate to leave the club. Also, he mentioned it like some weeks ago when he was the Golden Boy interview, and he said, "I'm happy in Dortmund." And this is true, just because he's happy with the club. It's just one year with the club for Holland. He's scoring goals. He's the star of the team. He's playing Champions League football. He's fighting in the Bundesliga. So for sure, he's happy, and he knows that next season at Borussia Dortmund, many change, many things will change just because they will go with another manager. Now they have Tertic after Fabre, but they will change. They will have another one. We will see if Marco Rose, but for sure he's the favourite. So also the new project of Borussia Dortmund could be interesting for, for Edling Holland to stay one year more. And then in the other summer with, the, with the, the clothes available, it will be interesting to see what's going on. But at the moment, he's really happy with Borussia Dortmund. The agent is Mino Raiola. 
So for sure he would consider uh, with Mino if he wants to leave. And at the moment, Mino has not received anything from Herling's side saying I want to leave. Mentioning Manchester United, I would say yes, but just because, okay, obviously they were close to sign Holland before joining Borussia Dortmund. Solskjaer is a big fan, but at the moment there is nothing at once, neither with Manchester United or Manchester City or Chelsea. All these clubs are interested, really, all these clubs. United, City, Chelsea, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Juventus, a lot of clubs, just because we're talking about the best young talent in the world and the best young striker in the world. But at the moment, as I mentioned, there is nothing advanced because when you want to sign these kind of players, it's a matter of strategy. So you have to prepare this kind of move. And, and you have to have the player ready to move, the club ready to sell, and also the clothes available. And in this moment, it's not available. So that's why at the moment the situation is really quiet about Holland and he's happy with Borussia Dortmund. Well, there's certainly one position where surely United are going to strengthen in the summer, and that's at centre back. Obviously, we were linked with uh, Upamecano. We're being linked with uh, Fafana from Leicester now. And a question here sent in by Amadiallo Jr. <laughs> that's his name on Twitter. Uh, he said, um, Are United scouting Fafana uh, or Upamecano? Uh, what do you know about Manchester United's pursuits of a centre back? And is it somewhere that Solskjaer is still really keen to strengthen? For sure, for sure, I agree with you. They need a centre back, and I think next summer they can go for a centre back. They will decide, as I always mention, around March and April about the right name, you know, just because they always decide uh, like a, before the end of the season and not in the middle of the season. But this is a position where Manchester United need to go with a, with a new player. So I agree with you. I think they will go for a centre back. We will see which one will be, just because with Upamecano it's really a difficult trace. Yesterday, Rummenigge mentioned for the interest of Bayern Munich, they are seriously interested in, in Upamecano, so they will be ready to try for Upamecano, and they are already talking with his agent. But also Liverpool, also Chelsea, also Paris Saint-Germain are talking with people around Upamecano. So at the moment it's an open race, and it's up to the player, because there is a close available for next summer for 42 million euros. I think all these clubs are ready to pay this close. But the problem is the player. You have to find a problem with the player. And the, Leipzig is not, a, is not a problem. Also because they are prepared to sell Upamecano. They are interested in Simakan from Strasbourg as possible new centre-back for Leipzig. But for sure, centre-backs, in my opinion, will be like the, top, the topic of next summer for all these clubs. Liverpool, Man United, and possible also Manchester City. For sure, Tottenham. Also probably Paris Saint-Germain and Bayern Munich. So it will be an interesting summer for centre-backs, sure. And aside from Upper Mancano, are there any centre backs that you know that United have been looking at, scouted, like have got, got in contact with agents of representatives of those players, uh, apart from Upper Mancano? At the moment, no. To be honest, no, just because they are really quiet on the situation. But also Upper Mancano, to be honest, Manchester United are really quiet in this moment, just because they want to, to see also how it's developing the situation with the season. You know, if they will win the league, will be something different. Also, they have to plan with the situation of the virus, you know, the impact of the virus is something big. So you can't plan for a summer where you sign Upamecano and Sancho and another top midfielder. You can't do something like this if we are still in this situation. Just because Manchester United, as many other clubs, are having problems with the virus, the situation of money, they are only losing money just because they are paying the salaries, top salaries, to the player and they are having no incoming money from the stadium, from merchandising, from sponsor. So today they can't plan for this kind of business, like signing, okay, we sign up a Meccano, we sign Sancho, we sign a centre-back, we sign a midfielder. It's really difficult at this moment, but it's not up to Manchester United. It's the same for all top clubs in the world. I see the situation here in Italy with Juventus and Inter, and look at Real Madrid and Barcelona. Real Madrid are not signing any player since one year and half. And the same for Barcelona. They can't sign any player in January. They can't spend 10 million euros for Eric Garcia just because they're in a difficult economic situation. So planning for next summer is something that they will do only when the situation will be cleared by the pandemic side. Because at the moment, with stadium closed, it's a big problem for top class to go for more than one top deal. That's it. Now, there's something that's... I suppose frustrated Manchester United fans. If we signed Donny van der Beek in the summer and we all, all United fans thought it was a fantastic signing. He hasn't really played that much and the fact that United are top of the league kind of goes to show that you, you can't really question every decision that Solskjaer makes. But something that I want to ask you is, uh, say Fred was a signing that Manchester United made under Jose Mourinho, but I, for a lot of fans it really felt like it wasn't really a Mourinho type signing. It was more the club pushed to sign van der Beek. And that's what I want to ask you because... I know that Solskjaer was influential in, in, in Donny joining, but 
was the signing of Donny van der Beek for Manchester United, was it, was it more of an opportunity that the club took to sign a good player for a cheap price? Or was, it, was he a player that Solskjaer really, really wanted to sign? Because surely if he, if he was, he would have played a little bit more this season. I'm told that everyone in Manchester United, every part of the club, Solskjaer, the board, everyone was convinced about Donny. Everyone. Obviously, it was a big opportunity, like signing a player for as Van de Beek for, I remember, it was 40 million euro. It's something amazing, in my opinion, just because, in my opinion, he's a fantastic player. I love Donny Van de Beek, and I don't understand why he's not playing, but it is just my personal opinion. I think that he's been just a bit unlucky, just because in the key moment for his season, like saying, okay, it's my moment, I can become a starter. Then they had Pogba back, back at his top level. And when the team is performing, changing something is something dangerous. So that's why Solskjaer at the moment is not changing anything. And we have to respect both parts. In my opinion, Manchester United did a good job signing on the back. I say, okay, give this, this guy some time. Just because obviously he's arrived like six months, not having pre-season with Manchester United because we had a crazy year with the COVID situation. So give this time, this guy his time to adapt also to English football, to trainings and everything. Because in my opinion, his quality and his skills are absolutely perfect. So it was just an opportunity, yes, but also Ole was totally convinced about this signing. So I my opinion it's just a matter of time. I, I, if I was Manchester United fans, I would say I have no doubt on this player just because he's really a fantastic guy, so respectful. Also, when he's not playing, he's not creating any problem. He's understanding and respecting the manager, respecting the fans, respecting the club. So he's just waiting. And... Somebody who we did sign in the summer was Edinson Cavani. We got him on a short-term deal. But he's been more like an Ibrahimovic part two at United rather than a Falcao part two. And his goals have been important. And United fans really, really enjoy him watching Cavani play. Uh, are United um, keen to extend Cavani's contract, to have those talks started? Is anything going on? Because I think all United fans would agree that we, if Cavani's playing like this, we want him to stay around for a bit longer. Yes, for sure, it's a possibility. They are not decided yet, and they are really quiet on this, just because Manchester United are convinced, and they know that Edinson would love to stay also for another season. So they will decide together with the player and with his agent, like in the, the second part of the season. I think, like I mentioned, in March and April, they decide these kind of things. So at the moment, there is no rush to do it. For sure, Manchester United are so happy with Cavani, and Cavani is so happy with the club, with the atmosphere, with the Premier League, for the first time in his career. So at the moment, he would love to stay. But he also respects Manchester United, like saying, OK, let's talk in the coming months because there is no rush to do this new contract. So at the moment, there is nothing like advanced or completed, but for sure there is interest by both parts to go on together. So they will decide in the coming months, but there is no problem between Manchester United and Cavani. And uh, one final question, going back to uh, potential departures this January. Jesse Lingard is a player who had an absolutely sensational, was it 2018-19, I think it was, was his prime year. And, but he, he's, he's been frozen out by Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Uh, and he's been linked with low moves to Sheffield United. Is, every, is anything actually going on with Lingard? And is there an actual chance that he could leave United this January? There is something around always with clubs like Sheffield and many others interested in, in, in Lingard, ready to give him the chance of playing and then next summer leaving the club and going to a, a top club. But at the moment also here in Italy we have also rumours about Lingard offering to AC Milan and offering to Inter Milan, so a lot of clubs interested. But at the moment 100% is not coming to Italy and there is nothing advanced yet with English clubs. I, I think it's the typical opportunity for the last week. So last week we will see if some clubs will arrive, we'll make a proposal, we'll talk with the agents because at the moment there is nothing advanced. But having a player like Lingard available on the market and ready to leave the club, if some good opportunity will be in the coming days, for sure they will go on. So we have to see next, um, next, uh, sorry, next week to see what's going on with Lingard. But at the moment there is nothing advanced yet. OK, uh, well, I mean, that's all the fans' questions answered. So thank you very much if you sent them in to me on Twitter. Uh, make sure you keep sending them in every single day Hashtag fan line. Uh, until transfer deadline day. Now, Ken, is there any chance that United make any sort of surprise signing in the next... How long we got? A couple of weeks? Is <laughs> never, anything going on? Never say never, but at the moment, no. At the moment, there is nothing advanced. They are so happy with the team. They are first at the table, so they're happy thing like this. And, and in your opinion, Fabrizio, who's winning the Premier League this season? <laughs> That's a good question. I say Manchester United. Just because I think hey. it's a good opportunity. Or Manchester United or Manchester City. I think the Premier League will be back in Manchester. Yes. 
Well, hopefully on the red side of Manchester, let's not go, <laughs> let's not go back to the blue again. But yeah, but thanks very much for your time today, Fabrizio, as always. I'm sure I'll speak to you again in the future. Obviously, you all know where to follow Fabrizio, at Fabrizio Romano on Twitter and on Instagram, the transfer guru that he is. And I'm sure if United are busy in the summer, I'm sure all the news will come from Fabrizio. So thank you very much for your time today, Fabrizio. Thank you. Thank you again. Always a big pleasure with you. And see you soon, I hope. And good luck for the season. Thank you very much. And hopefully, you're right, it does come back to Manchester <laughs> and it goes to United. Fingers crossed. I hope for you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Thanks, my friend.